Oh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session, uh, one of the first sessions of the day for the second day of uh, Scottish Learning Festival. Um, delighted to welcome you and to um, be introducing this session from Daydream Believers and Partners um, about a current project which is running the state of being. Um, it's my job just to give you a little bit of housekeeping before we start, um, just to let you know this session is being recorded, um, so you need to be aware of that. Please keep your microphone switched off and also your camera switched off, please. Um, and if you have any questions, please use the chat and please post comments in the chat and we'll keep an eye on that during the session. So I'm particularly pleased to introduce this session because I work um, with partners all over Scotland on the National Creative Learning Plan. And this work absolutely is helping to take that plan forward. Um, so Daydream Believers, uh, the session is going to focus on some of their work that's under the SCQF level five and six on creative thinking. Absolutely fantastic um, work and a new qualification which has relevance for everybody, whatever their area of teaching and learning in the curriculum. Um, and Scotland's Creative Learning Plan is supported by all of our national learning bodies, and it has a vision that everybody, whatever their role, um, whoever they are in Scottish education, will help enable them to recognise, apply and develop their creativity to help them to thrive in what we know is a really complex world. So um, I, without any more from me, I shall pass over to Helena Good from Daydream Believers. Thanks, Helena. Uh, thank you so much, Julia, um, and thank huge thanks to Education Scotland for, for all their support. So um, thank you. It's early. It's early out there. It's wet here. So anyone who's joined us, thank you. If you're listening later on in the recording uh, and it's warm and cosy, well done. Um, but I realise that there there's lots of maybe distractions going on for you at the minute. Um, maybe you're in a school um, and with our sort of short attention span, uh, apparently just eight seconds, I may already even have lost you. So if that's the case, uh, my name's Helena Good. Thanks very much for listening and uh, please get in touch. And that's how you do get in touch with us. So state of being, that's what we're here to talk about. Um, and hopefully you're still with us and you've tuned in. And you've tuned in because you care about your own well-being as well as that of your learners. So I urge you now to switch off if you can, switch off from the other distractions, put a do not disturb on your door, on your computer, and for the next 45 minutes, come with us as we travel across the country to meet the daydream believers and hear from our inspiring partners who are working together to reimagine education. As we move through the story, please put your comments and questions in the chat and the team, some of them you're going to meet and some of them I believe are, are out there at the minute. Um, they'll be able to answer and then we'll answer the questions at the end. OK, when I was eight, um, my mum and dad brought back this game from America called the Ungame. We were a big family. We, we are a big family. We were a foster family and making space for everyone's voices to be heard was off the challenge. So the young game and it's all American. I just love the photos in this. It's it's so 70s, but the young game opened up the space. You basically traveled around the board with no one really winning and you landed on spaces that encouraged you to tell it like it is. Share how you felt about a topic or do your own thing. For those of you who know me already, this game explains a lot about me. But anyway, my teenage brother was having none of this and quickly introduced us to Monopoly, where you could bankrupt your brothers and sisters and enjoy the fact that your annoying little sister was spending time in jail. The ungame was put to the back of the cupboard. But my parents were ahead of their time. We know now that we need to create space for our young people to discuss, share and tell it like it is. So this is our Tell It Like It Is session, where we're sharing insights from all our partners working on the creative thinking qualification at levels five and six, 24 SCQF points. 
We're going to talk about one of the challenges on our new playlist that supports this qualification, State of Being, written by Acrylicise Agency in London. And we're delighted that Alice has joined us in London from the agency this morning. But just before we meet Alice, for those of you who've not heard the Daydream story, allow me to do a very quick overview. These are our guiding principles. These are our kind of our mission statements. And you'll see within those interesting words, real world context, bringing the real world into our classroom. Skills, a scaffold, and we talk about our, our qualification and our resources doing that. And also there, our mantra, trust the teacher. Our lessons can be filtered by age and lesson length. It's a simple format that enables a teacher to build a personalized experience for their pupils. Embedded through many of the resources are the UN Sustainability Goals, which we believe should be a key driver influencing the shape of our education system. Our resources are split into playlists and warm ups. The playlists here support the senior phase qualification and the warm ups can be used in upper primary and BGE. In the creative thinking qualification, we use a five point framework. These are our learning outcomes. They're, the learning outcomes follow a user eccentric design process and support delivery across an academic year. We love the what if statement in Daydream. So what if these five learning outcomes could be applied across the curriculum? The same learning outcomes to teach computer science, English and history. What if creative thinking was a core subject in all our schools? And we're on a mission to make that happen. How are we going to do that? We have created series two different playlists and the one that we're talking about today is spaces and places and you can go in at the end of this call and download this for free. It's a full academic year that you can scaffold as a teacher with three different challenges and warm ups. The one that we're talking about today is state of being, but you can also see the Lego process where Lego creative agencies share how they come up with ideas, how they present, how they fail and fix. Forestopia, which we're working with primary schools at the minute to develop into a primary school resource, an amazing resource written by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation at IDEO, which asks our young people to reimagine a forest connected to the ecosystem Sorry, reimagine a theme park connected to the ecosystem of a forest and solar punk island. You crash land onto an island with 15 minute with a 15 minute city rule. So it's level five and six. It was credit rated by Edinburgh Napier University and moderated by Edinburgh College. This is not an SQA unit. This is not an SQA qualification. This is something different. So. This is one of our lessons, and I'm just going to kind of pause here for a minute, um, just making sure you're still with me. But one of the lessons from the Creative Bravery uh, resource written by DNAD, and in the lesson, it asks our young people, um, gives them tools on how they build on ideas by saying yes and instead of sorry, no. So I'm thinking at the minute what your mindset is. Are you thinking yes and I'm excited or sorry, no? Um, and I think one of the questions that we have at the minute is how do we change our mindset around education to yes and and move away from sorry no these are our yes and schools the schools who are currently working with us on both level five and six these schools are, are working with a different kind of pedagogy that is agile collaborative and gives learners a real sense of agency where they set their own goals take academic risks and along the way discover who they are as individuals. Today, this story, this webinar is all about our amazingly brave teachers who are working with us across 20 schools in Scotland. But we've also been incredibly lucky to work with amazing partners, our believers, from Lego, Rockstar to Glasgow School of Art. But one of our most faithful and inspiring believers is the Acrylicise Agency in London. And it gives me absolute great pleasure to introduce Alice Lazarus, who joins us live from the agency this morning. I've always wanted to say this. Good morning, London. Good morning, Alice. It's over to you. 
Thank you, Helena. So hi, everyone. I'm Alice. Um, I'm a designer with Acrylicize. And um, as Helena said, we are a creative uh, design studio um, who, and we partnered with Daydream Believers. Um, and we're a multidisciplinary studio um, working across art and design, um, spanning kind of brand expression and also public realm um, art, art installations. Um, and if you, I think if you go to the next slide, this sort of show that we all come from really different backgrounds, but we all kind of share a love of creativity and arts expression um, to kind of champion, uh, tell powerful stories and kind of really be able to express oneself through art. Um, and we have a wide ranging team from finance and project management through to design and curation, but we all uh, kind of come from similar, similar love of creativity. Um, and I think if you go to the next slide. Uh, just hold, hold on a minute. Something just went wrong. I'm like, here we go. That's <laughs> working. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm kind of an underlying uh, ethos of the studio is to kind of tell stories and really be able to champion whether that's a brand, you know, we work with lots of clients, kind of a tech company's brand expression or whether that's really invigorating a new housing development and trying to make a place for people to dwell and a nice space for people to be and it's kind of very much turning spaces into places um, so if you go to the next slide so this is just a little peek of all the things that we do and um, ranging from curation where we work with local artists and really support kind of grassroots within areas to also doing our own design work wayfinding um, and then also activations through kind of immersive um, and interactive experiences through the artwork um, and if you go yeah so uh, we as I just said harness the ability and power of art and creativity to help people fall in love with spaces and we obviously part of that is also really championing the kind of grassroots of people coming into the creative industries and obviously going that through into school and at schools and education um, and that's how we got involved with daydream believers is to kind of help make some resources for the kind of uh, qualification and see how we can really champion that if you go to the next slide i think yeah we go into obviously this really lovely project that we developed called state of being which is all about creating an environment where um for students within schools um to really create a space for people for wellness and to, for them to experience kindness and kind of connections and be able to practice good mental health, which is obviously, especially post pandemic, a really big thing within the kind of uh, society to really be able to look after oneself and create a space for that. And so this brief is to create free permanent artworks and that kind of provoke thoughtful conversation and give a sense of openness and inclusivity for students in schools. Um, and then I think it, we have two different pathways so students can choose a space within their own school which obviously has its own challenges because you're very much looking at the uh, physical boundaries of what school they go to but then also they could do an imaginary route um, where we've provided a complete support pack um, with kind of models where they can you know completely make it their own um, obviously within reason of the uh, uh, boundaries of the uh, brief. Um, but a really exciting space. And this is just a quick case study of, of a project that we did in America, in Seattle as part of the design festival, where we provided a framework and then brought the community in to really engage with the framework that we produced um, and be out for them to be able to express themselves in an artwork and have own, uh, ownership over this artwork and be able to really express themselves as part of a community. Um, and make it a bit of a time capsule for the time. Um, so we always start off with what the story is, what the inspiration is. That is the core of every project that we work on. And that whether that's a brand or whether that's a place or an inspiration for a, a kind of a building, this is always the core thing of what we have to start with. And then we go into doing a workshop um, with the client and kind of work out what they look, what they kind of, are interested in so I think if you go to the next slide it's got a fab thank you Helena so this is a sliding scale of all the images that we kind of work with so we start off always with a workshop and we kind of gauge what the client would like so whether that is going from a kind of like this page says a literal really specific artwork or more abstract um, kind of subjective idea and we kind of go through 
it goes from material options through to colors through to kind of the way people want, we want to experience our work do we want it to be active do we want it to be passive it's all these kind of ver slight variants of how we can think about a piece and then gives us all the great kind of guidelines to then go off and design an artwork that hopefully the client will really like um, and this is a really great practice for the students obviously we have a problem um, this happens all the time in kind of everyday uh, client work. Problems arise and it's how you can then deal with it, how you can problem solve, think outside the box. Nothing is over. It just needs sometimes a reframing of how we can make it work. And I think, so there's a few thoughts. So sometimes the budget gets cut, sometimes things change. So interior palettes can sometimes change and that can completely change your own color palette. Sometimes the power socket's moved or there is no power socket. Um, sometimes you need to make the material completely sustainable or it needs to be able to work within kind of lighting guidelines. There's all sorts of variants, but that's a really exciting way to get people to think, OK, this is what I want to do and this is what I've got and how you can then make it work within that framework. And whether you go into kind of creativity, whatever realm, that's always a really valid kind of starting point um, and then activate which is kind of an extra layer that you can add into the pieces so how you can engage with the audience and how you can really get people to use the space in a different way or engage with the artwork and you have to think about ways who's going to be using the space and um, are they going to be what are they going to be doing in the space can you put on concerts and then something happens with the sound and it's a really good place to think about the conversations that can come from activating an artwork um, and just sort of pushing whatever idea that the students come up with a bit further and see how you can push it to kind of carry on going. There is no such thing as a bad idea. It's just framing it in the way that you need to frame it. Um, and that's something that's really exciting within the creative industries and hopefully will kind of feed down into inspiring students for this. Um, and yeah, the final design is always great to see. And it's always about the process. And sometimes there's little nuggets that there's always things that can kind of spark other ideas. And you never know where ideas can come back in to fruition. Um, and it's just, it's all about the, kind of the process and the research. And often that is where a lot of the kind of sparks can all come from is, you know, workshopping and research. Thank you, Alice. That that's been brilliant, and I think you know what really inspires um, everyone here at Daydream, and I know the teachers is this this agile experience. You know, this real life context. You show, you know, this is what we do, but you also just excite and you've shared some of the techniques that you guys used when you know when you need to come up with ideas. Um, it, it's it's an absolute gift. Um, so how does it work in practice? We're going now live up to up to Banff, from London to Banff, up to, to the amazing Caroline. First name amazing, second name Caroline. Um, Caroline, you're up there and you're going to tell us your story of how this is working in practice. Yep, absolutely. And uh, I'll lead on from what Alice was saying. But before I do, uh, just to set some context, this is the second year that I am taking a class through the Creative Thinking Qualification. So if that's not testament to the fact that it worked well the first year, I don't know what will be because we've had a full class of 24 years. Students have come from a variety of backgrounds, whether they've done art and design, design and technology. Some haven't done any and they've just taken this on a whim. We've had students from our enhanced provision unit as well. And the main reason that we had decided to take this creative and brave leap was that we used to have end of years expedition, uh, exhibitions of our student work. And over the last couple of years, it seems to be very rinse and repeat where students were being advocated and pushed to create sort of identical folios. Um, and at Banff Academy, we have a big push on skills. So three of our key ones are creativity, problem solving and communication. And this qualification really hit all that. And with the, the state of being, um, what we do at Banff is we really, if we're asking a student to produce a piece of work, they need to see it in a real life context. So this is the first couple of um, pages from a variety of sketchbooks. I'm going to show you some level five and level six students, but we have approached our head teacher. He is a big advocate of increasing the support for the mental health of our students. So we have secured funding to make sure that at the end of this project, 
we will be fabricating the artworks that the students have done. We'll be picking a selection of them. And the way that I run the classes, although all the play deck uh, is there and the slides are there, I kind of pick and choose and try and curate it to the students we've got in front of us. And we run it like a sort of university style tutorial. And instead of a driving question, we have guiding questions that we come up with ourselves. And then the class will discuss what are their needs to know. So for this um, part of the research, their guiding question is, what is location? And their need to know that they were coming up with themselves was, where is it? How big is it? What does it look like? Who uses it? How do we get there? And I think the key strength as we go through the slides that you'll start to see is that the students really put a lot of themselves into it. They feel really comfortable in expressing their strengths and how they lay it out. We've got very visual students. We've got students that are very text-based. And while we like keeping them in that comfort zone, we do like to just keep pushing them, just nudging them ever so slightly out of their comfort zone over the course of a project. So by the end of the project, they find a completely new comfort zone um, and a new strength that they didn't know that they had. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next couple of slides is where we were starting to explore wellness because to them, originally, they thought wellness was just equal with health. So the first sort of research they started to look at is what are the different aspects and facets of wellness? And then it moved on to what is wellness to me as an individual? And if we just, you can see here the way that they want to express it. And this is the bit that I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely love about this uh, qualification is that I have got to know my students who I've taught first, second, third year. In the couple of weeks I've had them for creative thinking, I know much more about their hobbies, their interests, their passions than I have when I was teaching them graphics or woodwork. You can see here that they are taking complete ownership, not only of their sketchbook, but their learning and they're getting passionate about it. And that passion is what is driving the quality of their work. Now for the level six, there is a requirement to also engage in primary research. But what I found when we were starting to think about what is wellness to others is that my level five students were also really keen to go out and start to find out about the views of the community in their school. And again, it's really interesting to see how they do it. Some wanted to do surveys, some did questionnaires. You get students that are very precious about their sketchbook and will give out pieces of paper so that they can choose how it's laid in. And other people are like, yeah, just add yourself to the sketchbook. But the excitement in the class, the passion, honestly, the, the next page that I'll show you is from one girl's sketchbook. And this is about five periods work. We started um, quite late. We started a week later in Aberdeenshire than most schools in Scotland. So this is her work up until not last week, but the week before. And the reason I wanted to share this particular sketchbook is just to show the real life context and impact that the qualification had. So this is a student who was applying for one of our senior executive positions in the school. And whilst all the other students had provided a PowerPoint to talk through, she took her sketchbook with her and she was showing the engagement she'd had in the community, speaking to all of the year groups, to the teachers, the involvement she'd had in the school. And this was to an elected panel, head teacher, business um, council members, parent council members, and they were absolutely blown away and created a new role based on the strength of her sketchbook. And I've included just in the last slide her words about what she thinks about creative thinking. And it's all about the students' um, viewpoints in this. So I could tell you that I love this qualification. I love teaching it. Um, it has given me a refreshed passion for teaching. I feel that it's not textbook. We can use the slides. We can dip into our own strengths. But overall, I think the, the words here, this idea of not being forced into a box, you know, she wasn't sure about it to start off with, but she's just taking it and run with it. And that she now sees her pursuing this in a life, uh, life on, I think is an opportunity that I'm really glad that we've offered to our Banff Academy students. And you can see from the quality of their work that they, it's something that we've been crying out for. So thank you to Daydream. Thank you so much, Caroline. Honestly, um, you, every time you speak and you show the work, I get quite emotional. It's just amazing to see. Um, so we're we're hop skipping down now to to Philippa. We're on we're on a final rush here now, Philippa. So um, over to you to tell tell your story. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Philippa, and I'm one of the Daydream team. I'm seconded to Daydream one day a week, but I'm also an art and design teacher at Drummond Community High School in Edinburgh, four days a week, and I'm running the new award um, with a class of fourth, fifth, and sixth years. 
So you can see some of their sketchbooks here. And I was really um, delighted to see some of the feedback. I asked them for just sum up the project in one word and inspiring, engaging, thoughtful, thought provoking, intriguing. That's what they came back with. Um, so like Caroline, on the next slide, you'll see that we began with considering the difference between health and well-being, but not just a general look at well-being, but what well-being means to us as individuals. And on the next slide, you'll see that that generated some really interesting conversation. So this is a student who came up with, he was talking about swimming and the sense of quiet that he got from swimming. But in particular, it was the weightlessness that he loved. And he talks about the freedom that that gave him. So I have a feeling just from that very initial um, exercise that that word weightlessness is probably going to inform the rest of his project. Um, and on the next slide, you'll see um, a lovely mood board that a student came up with reflecting on our own sense of well-being. But of course, we had to start thinking about the practicalities of the project. Um, so on the next slide, you'll see, um, like Caroline, we have at Drummond um, a well-being hub for students from S1 to S3, and it's a new space. Um, so some of our students are exploring the virtual option and some of them are exploring um, the real life space at Drummond. So you can see the students starting to think about the limit limitations and the opportunities of the space, the dimensions of the space, um, and also things like footfall, lighting, location. Um, and then at this point, we went back to the brief and really just as a way of personalising it, we asked students to think about narrowing that brief down to nine words that mattered to them and then take it down to six and then take it down to three. And from that, students really came up with their own personal um, ideas of what was mattered most in this space. So for some of them, it was connectivity. For some of them, it was in inclusivity. And, and that's going to, I think, really um, inform the rest of their project. So onto the next slide, you'll see one of the warm-up um, activities um, that Alice was speaking about. It's called Keywords, and it's getting the students to just think about the key messages that they want their artwork to convey. So looking back to the brief, looking back to the mind maps, they narrowed it down to 20 words. And one of the students started colour coding the words and thinking about the real feeling that came off those, which was lovely. Um, now we're really into researching other people's um, feelings about well-being, so workshopping with our classmates and also speaking to people in the hub about how the well-being space is used by students. So on the next slide, you'll see definitely one of the favourite activities for my group so far um, was the sliding scale um, one that Alice spoke about. And it's really to get them to define the tone of their artwork and the, the feeling that they want to communicate in the space. So you can see here, a student's looked at in creating a sliding scale of engaging images to passive ones, sophisticated to playful. And actually what she's learned from this is that she wants to create an engaging space. But on the next slide, I think you'll see that she explored minim, kind of more a minimal space so she wants it to be engaging, but it wants she wants it to be minimal in, in appearance. So this sliding scale was really useful for the individuals and through talking to others about what the space should really mean, you know, for the rest of the audience. Um, so uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Acrylicize for creating this amazing resource. It's really made the research phase really exciting. And I think that's something that students often tend to skip over. So um, I can't wait to see what the rest of the year brings and what the rest of our story turns out to be at Drummond. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, I think just looking at that and looking at the beautiful words that are young people and, and really getting them to think about a space, the space and well-being in such a different way. And I think that's what um, what Alice and, and the team at Acrylicize have created that is so inspiring. So we're heading up to um, Balerno now, up to, to Katie. Um, and Katie, you're going to tell us uh, in, in a very fast for format, and sorry that we're running out of time, but um, just a little bit about 
I'm just going to show that this, hopefully, Katie, it'll work for us. Um, Philip, I can just see you. So when I press it, if you, if you can hear the sound, give me a thumbs up. What I enjoy about the project is the opportunity to express our creativity and express our creative freedom in new ways that can cause positive change. My favourite part so far is talking to people from our chosen spaces and seeing their unique point of view. I chose this course because I wanted to build the necessary skills as I wanted to work in a creative industry in the future. I found the visuals clear and easy to follow as well as relevant and inspiring. I would recommend this course to other students as it expands team working skills, which is something so important in creative industries. So hopefully Katie, I knew it was going to do that. Um, let me just go, go back. Right. Katie, you're on. That's you. Brilliant. Yeah, so um, hi, everybody. I'm Katie Simpson, art and design teacher at Bolerno High School. But same as Philippa, I'm also seconded to Daydream Believers one day a week um, and help to put the acrylicise um, project together um, with the team. Um, so that little video was just a um, snapshot into our research that we've done so far. Um, very similar to Philippa, my guys have loved the research. Uh, last week I actually asked them, well I thought they were maybe getting a little bit bored and they were like, no, 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 we want to keep going. Um, so they're really excited to explore all these different avenues. Um, I'm going to talk to you though about um, the assessment that we do for the qualification. And um, we've created two brand new different ways of assessment, one formative and one summative. Um, and the one you can see just now on the screen is our formative assessment tool. So it's called Stamp It. It's a physical stamp and it can be used at any time um, of our projects. It's really quick and easy. Literally just stamp on the piece of work that the students have been doing. Um, and then you can assess our five assessment principles. So you can see each logo around the outside relates to one of our assessment outcomes. And then the little dots in the centre, in the middle, it starts at a D. And as you come to the outside, it gets towards an A. So you can just circle what stage they're at and give them um, some feedback, give the students individual feedback. It's clear, it's quick, and it's a really easy visual for our students to see where they're at at all times. And the learning outcomes are the same that industry use. So throughout the projects, the students are seeing that um, and being reminded all the time about that real world content as well. Um, so on the next slide, you'll see our second summative assessment tool, and that is our Stellar app. So this is an online, simple and easy to use um, application um, that allows you to summatively mark our students' work. Um, it's easy to use and um, you can see just briefly in that little screenshot there the sliders and you can um, move them up and down to suit the work um, that the students have created. And it also shows you the rubric, so it adjusts in real time um, so that saves us lots of time when we're marking. Um, and there's also a little box that you can add personalised feedback for the students. So you can give them positives, you can give them areas for improvements. And then you can also download that as a PDF so you can save it if you like to keep a hard copy somewhere. You can print it off as well so you can give it to parents um, on report nights or parents evenings. And then also you can email it as well. So you can email it to anybody, but also you can email it straight to the students so that they have um, real time access to that as well. Um, everything is saved and backed up, so everything's super safe. And then this is a little video that shows you it in real time.
I'm just going to stop sharing there. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, we started this session and we we talked about um, we talked about really telling it like it is. And I think what's been really beautiful is to hear industry's engagement, to hear what it's like in the classroom, um, and. Just, we'd really love now, um, I haven't had a chance to to look at the chat room. I don't know um, if there's anyone out there would like to ask us a question. We do realise in Daydream we're, we're talkers, you know, and, and we we like to tell the story. Um, but um, I don't know if anyone, we have just a, a couple of five minutes left there. Um, if anyone has got any questions, just to, to shout out. 